What's up YouTube? Drew here and you're in my shop with this awesome 2005 Toyota Prius. Hey, if you're a subscriber, thank you so much. If you're not, maybe consider subscribing after you watch some of this video. Uh, you guys know that I absolutely love these cars. Check out my video, link in the description on the happy 20th birthday to the second generation Prius. Um, this car did come out in 2003 in Japan and since they don't use um, you know, model years of the coming year. It actually was a 2003 model, but here in the United States, the 2004 through the 2009 is the second generation. And there are three things, count them, one, two, three, you could do to your second generation Prius over a weekend for not a lot of money to make it run like new. Obviously, this is not gonna fix internal engine wear, but and I'm gonna probably upset some of you guys. Maybe I'll have to hug a tree a little bit harder, but the the heart of the Prius isn't as much its battery and its amazing power split device and electric motors and all that jazz. None of that happens in a second generation Prius without its internal combustion engine. And that is the lower end, just a plain old Toyota 1NZ, but it is the FXE uh, head, right? It's an Atkinson cycle four-cylinder. Uh, again, it's a version of the 1NZ, which is awesome, but it's an FXE because it's the hybrid version and Atkinson cycle, not to repeat myself. But anyways, if this engine does not have good compression, meaning its piston rings and its valves aren't sealing and making pressure inside uh, the combustion chambers to ignite the gasoline and the air when the spark happens. None of this is going to make a difference. Please do not waste your time and money and don't blame me if your engine is worn out. But if you're like me and you get your hands on tons of or if you own a 200,000 mile plus Prius that the engine is still fine, it just doesn't run like new. Here's a couple things you can do to make that happen. Number one, your spark. So you might not have a check engine light, and if you do, that's something totally different, but spark plugs are neglected. On our own minivan, somehow we got to like 170,000 miles, and I'm like, wait, I never changed the spark plugs, and it was running fine, but you know, the, the tip of the spark plug isn't as sharp as it could be, and they're a little bit worn out. So uh, genuine Toyota spark plugs, or um, yeah, NGK, Denso, whatever, there'll be some info in the description when I publish this for you guys. Very easy, you just take out this guy here with these two, uh, 10 millimeter bolts, and then there's one, two, three, four 10 millimeters. Unplug these harnesses, pop out the coils, set them on the windshield in order, and just quickly change your spark plugs. That shouldn't be something that uh, if you're going to take on the other jobs, you wouldn't be able to do without further instruction. Thing number two, and there is a link in the description to a video of me showing you how to do this. Fuel injectors, when they're good, they have a fan. They, they fan out gas. Gasoline in a warm engine should be mixed 14.7 parts air to one part gasoline. If that mixture gets messed up, again, in a, in a warm engine, when it's cold, it's more gas, less air, uh, which is um, why these sometimes misfire on cold start. Uh, link in the video or link in the description to a video about that. Um, but as, as the injectors get weak, they go from a nice healthy fan to like kind of, eh, you know, you literally see like whoosh, versus like, and, um, you know, getting some rebuilt ones on eBay for about a hundred bucks, Toyota Genuine, or maybe you don't mind spending the money buying Denso, you know, right off a of rock auto brand new. Uh, they're pretty easy to change. They're literally like right there. Um, you have to take off the air box. Again, there's a, a link in the description. And then the third thing. So we've talked about spark. We've talked about fuel. We're going to talk about air. Air passes into the engine through the throttle body. So let's look at one of those and actually have an example here of what we're talking about. So this is the tube and a carburetor. I believe it's called a Venturi. That's irrelevant. A carburetor would mix gasoline in uh, probably somewhere right near that screw. Um, this doesn't mix the gasoline in. It's after this where the injectors are. But that plate inside there, this is all very precision. But as you see, carbon buildup is uh, kind of an irregular surface and it really slows down air. If, if a car had carpet strapped to every single or glued to every single panel, it would be decidedly less aerodynamic because of the texture of the carpet, even though the shape of the car is aerodynamic. Well, it's the same thing in here. You're supposed to have a polished aluminum bore with a steel plate in it and if it's all you know that crap um 
you know, that's just not going to cut it. So I'm going to have a link in the description eventually here on how to uh, take this off. But cleaning it, I'm just going to walk over to the old shelf here and grab some cleaner. Um, it, you're literally essentially just power washing it, but with a solvent. So maybe not a good example because I grabbed the wrong stuff. But as you see, uh, that did clean it a little bit. I just did one the other day. And, uh, you know, with the little straw attached, you just get right in there. You don't ever touch that plate. Again, there's going to be a full uh, video on how to do this eventually. So that's one good reason to subscribe, right? You should, uh, the spark plugs, you, you don't need a video. If you do, this is probably the wrong video for you because um, that's not hard at all. The, the um, fuel injectors, again, the link is in the description. And you, you're definitely going to want to see some of what can go wrong with that job. And this throttle body that's a little bit involved, it's right there, as you see. There's that spring. There's that spring, right? So you've got this tube that's supposed to be smooth, this plate that's supposed to be smooth, that's supposed to move smoothly, air's supposed to flow beautifully. That's not the case at 200,000 miles. It's not the, probably the case at 100,000 miles. I assure you that if you have good compression in your engine, again, no thumbs down because you have a bad engine. That's not my fault. That's not this channel's fault. That's not your spark plugs or your fuel injectors or your throttle body's fault. Unless, of course, one of those things uh, catastrophically failed and did the damage. But you get my point. If your engine's worn out, this ain't going to fix it. New shoes aren't going to help a broken knee, right? So uh, same thing. But if you've got a good engine and, you know, these cars, these engines go three, four, five hundred thousand miles. If you really, really take care of them, I mean, you could get a million miles out of one of these cars. Uh, but part of taking care of it is these things. So three things to make your good Prius engine run like new. Change your spark plugs if you haven't in a hundred thousand miles. Uh, either take apart and clean or replace with genuine Toyota or genuine Toyota rebuilt fuel injectors and clean that throttle body. So really an engine, again, comes down to four things. One, compression. Two, air. Three, gasoline. Four, spark. And of course, all that has to be in the proper timing. And that is how an engine fires and turns and everything is smooth. You screw with any one of those four things. Again, compression, spark, gas, air, or we'll say timing, that, that extra one important thing, right? If you screw with any of those, the engine isn't going to run as perfectly as it could. So here is just a quick video on the three things that you could do to make your Prius run like new. And again, I assure you, you will notice a difference. If you're having any symptoms, again, watch that video. There's a link in the description. The one that I did on the third generation Prius is pretty specific to the head gasket issue that they have. And if you disagree with that, um, we could talk because I look at a probably a couple thousand um, condition reports on these cars per year. And yes, there is an issue, especially after 200,000 miles. But anyways, Gen 2, bulletproof, they do have their issues. Uh, the video is about everything that can cause a misfire, but what usually causes one in these cars. So be sure to watch that if you're having symptoms. There's a lot of good information there. So anyways, I'm Drew. I hope this video was helpful. If it was helpful in any way or if it just entertained you, please give it a thumbs up. That's the only way that we know and the internet knows and YouTube knows that this is good content and it makes us feel warm and fuzzy. So uh, please hit that thumbs up button. Definitely subscribe to the channel. I'm going to give you guys this Prius content as long as I can. Yes, these cars are starting to age out, period. They're easily the best used car anywhere near their price point and probably in general that you can buy. If you've got the money for a 2000 to 2006 Lexus LS 430 or a Toyota UFC 30 or 31 Celsior, that's a little bit better of a car. But when you take into account maintenance costs and fuel economy, this one comes out on top. So that said, the best used car on the market, bam, right here. But they are aging out. Every day they're getting crashed. Every day they're rusting out. Every day they're falling into hands that don't take care of them and they're not making anymore. But hang on because you would also know if you're subscribed, we import cars from Japan. Uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so if you want to see more about that. We import cars from Japan and in the fall of 2020, 28. These cars are going to be old enough in Japan to legally import to the United States. And there's a ton of them over there with like 40 or 50,000 miles on them and no rust at all. So we're going to pick back up on the Prius content full steam when that day comes. And we don't want to rush it because we know life is short. Anyways, again, if you're entertained, if you like it, if it made you happy, if it helped you in any way, thumbs up and definitely subscribe to the channel. God bless you guys. Take care. Bye.